Hello, everyone. Great to see you all coming into today's session. Thank you again for joining us. It's great to see so many familiar faces back on Zoom. So I wanted to welcome you all um, and uh, let you know that today is our very first BMDO Links event. Uh, my name's Katie Stewart and I'm the General Manager at the Victorian Music Development Office. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Um, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's our new networking event, BMDO Links, um, which is an event that aims to connect the Victorian music industry to key topics locally and globally around business innovation, new technology and alternative revenue streams. So we have people joining um, from all over the country today. I am on the land of the Boonwurrung people, which I'd like to acknowledge. If you're a First Nations person here today, I acknowledge you and all the traditional first owners of country and recognise their continuing connection to the land, waters and culture. And I pay my deep respect to elders past, present and emerging. So we're going to jump right into today's session. Um, I'd like to invite you all to turn on your camera if you feel comfortable. Um, it is always fantastic to see people's faces, um, you know, as we connect through these sessions. Feel free to update your uh, Zoom name with your pronouns if, you're, if you'd like to. Um, and also feel free to send us a message in the chat um, to say hello and acknowledge uh, country that you're joining from today. Uh, as we go through the presentations, um, if you have any questions that come to mind, feel free to pop them in the chat and we're going to have some time for Q&As at the end. And then at the end of today's discussion, um, please stick around for some small group networking. We're going to have our speakers sticking around too um, and moving around breakout rooms saying hi to you all. Um, so it would be great to have you in on that session towards the end. So I'd like to introduce our presenter today, uh, Reggie Barpe, who will be presenting an introduction to music and NFTs. Reggie is a Burmese born Australian creative entrepreneur with over 15 years experience in music, media, advertising, nightlife and youth culture in China and the broader Asia Pacific region. He is the co-founder of Club Media, a transformative media company that pioneers the entertainment tech landscape and champions Asian creatives in the Asia Pacific region. I'm gonna hand it over to Reggie now uh, to start the session. Thanks Katie and hello everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Um, it's great to see so many people interested in NFTs and excited to share some of the learnings that I've had throughout the years and hopefully it's beneficial to all of you. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. So just give me a second to do that. Oh, is that, um, is that working for everyone? Awesome. Um, so yeah, as Katie said, my name's Reggie. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Club Media, a company that has offices across the Asia Pacific and predominantly works at the intersection of youth culture, entertainment and technology. Um, so when it comes to NFTs, uh, I've had a bit of experience with it myself personally. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, we did a NFT drop for a Chinese rap group called Higher Brothers on the 88 Rising label. Um, and that was done on the Binance platform. And we've also done uh, several other NFT drops with digital artists, virtual fashion. So I had some experience um, personally with NFTs and it's something that I'm really excited about. I think it's, a, it's proving to be a, a really beneficial um, new technology and advancement for creators. Um, but to talk about NFTs, I wanted to sort of kind of go back to the beginning a little bit, um, especially for a lot of the, some of the audience that might be here, uh, this might be the first introduction to NFTs. So to understand NFTs, you kind of need to start with blockchain. And blockchain was a concept that was introduced to me back in 2016, a friend of mine, Ed passed me a white paper, um, basically a document that outlined uh, the idea of Bitcoin. And I spent an entire day reading through the whole thing. I got through it, I put it down and I was like, I have no idea what I just read. It made no sense to me. It was a complete, uh, it was like reading a, a foreign language. But there were certain concepts in there that I kind of understood. And through just conversation with my friends and with Ed and other people, 
all of a sudden the picture started becoming clear that actually blockchain is revolutionary. And there's so many instances where we're seeing since 2016, where blockchain is disrupting and infiltrating and improving so many different industries across the world. So talking about blockchain, let me just, um, to understand it, the easiest way to, and I guess the main sort of takeaway to understand is that it's a decentralized information recording system that's incredibly secure, impossible to change, and it's completely transparent. So blockchain itself is, is like I said, like an, an infrastructure or a concept um, that's, that other companies or other businesses use the technology to, to build their businesses upon. Um, we've seen blockchain ad adopted a lot with cryptocurrencies. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, have used blockchain as a way to create a digital economy, essentially. And the reason for that, I think, especially in the early days, is because if you look at the centralized systems of banking and finance, it was really slow, it was really rigid, and you didn't have control of your own wealth. So blockchain sort of came along and offered this new solution that was decentralized. You kind of had a peer-to-peer -peer network that you could send directly to the person that you want to send money to. Um, and it was far faster than any sort of international transfer at the time, um, which, you know, from my experience, even trying to send money to China can take weeks, uh, if not months sometimes, depending on the sums that you need to send. So blockchain was this innovative sort of technology that sort of came in and provided this new decentral solution. Now, when we look at the blockchain, there's a couple of tokens that are predominantly traded on the blockchain. So as I mentioned, Bitcoin, Ethereum, they're forms of a fungible token. And these tokens uh, can be replaced by one another. So very similar to um, the Australian dollar or US dollar. If you have $1, you trade it for another dollar, it's the same. You're not increasing or decreasing the value. However, when you look at non-fungible tokens, there are another token that's on the blockchain that um, provide a uniqueness and they can't be replaced. So each, each non-fungible token or NFT is different to the next. So a really good way to explain this is actually like an air ticket. So if you buy an air ticket, you have a seat number um, that's going to be on a certain plane that's lifting off at a certain time on a certain day. And it has sort of data that's put into that ticket. Um, if you were to switch that ticket with someone else, then you're going to be on another plane, another seat flying off to somewhere that you probably didn't want to fly off to. So a non-fungible token is similar. It has data that um, is, is specific to a certain asset um, in, in, the, in the case of blockchain. Um, and NFTs are commonly associated with Ethereum because they were the first to sort of create the smart contract, which allows for these NFTs to be created. Um, and Ethereum is like, block, is like Bitcoin. It's like, a, it could be dealt like a cryptocurrency, but it also provides additional infrastructure for people to sort of build upon their blockchain. Um, and NFTs is just one of the tools of the Ethereum network. Um, however, there's a lot more newer blockchains that are coming out that are also offering and providing the service to create NFTs on their blockchain, uh, including Binance, Cardano, Solana is a really popular one of recent. So what are the benefits of NFTs? Um, so the first thing, as I mentioned, is that they're unique. Um, there's no two NFTs that are the same. So just like plane tickets, there's no two plane tickets that are the same. Uh, because it's built on the blockchain and dealt on the blockchain, um, it's, it's provably scarce. You can actually tell because blockchain is transparent, you can actually see how many of these tokens that were created uh, or minted. And it also proves the authenticity of each of these NFTs. So um, you can see who the original owner was as well as subsequent owners through the tra transaction history. So if I get an NFT and let's say it's like a digital asset, like a JPEG, um, I can actually see when it was sold, who it was created by, and then the other people that have maybe purchased it and traded it uh, before I bought it, if any. So it's, it's become a really powerful tool to be able to track digital assets through, through, technology, through the internet, essentially. So what are these digital assets that can be um, used as an NFT? Basically, almost any digital file. So when it comes to music, an MP3 could be an NFT, a WAV file, with digital art, you can look at JPEGs and GIFs, uh, movies, MP4s, and something that's becoming very popular is um, virtual items. So if you look at things 
um, like gaming that's becoming really popular on blockchain platforms. You can purchase virtual land, um, which is represented as an NFT, virtual fashion items, AR items, and even in-game items. Um, another useful um, asset class is also as tickets. So you, they could be used as a physical ticket um, as well as film. So you, uh, recently there's like the, uh, a sort of NFT release of a film where you kind of buy an NFT and it gives you access to a screening before it goes to the cinemas um, and other online events as well. So NFTs can be a sort of ticketing to those online events, even something like, you know, the event that you're on now. So what does this mean for creators? I think the big takeaway is that uh, for the first time, there's a consistent value and ownership system for digital assets, the assets that I've just mentioned. And that's something that hasn't really been offered to um, creators before. And I think we saw that um, in spades earlier this year when the sort of NFT boom sort of took off. Uh, we saw that digital artists for, for pretty much their entire career, their, their value, their asset, was so easy to repl replicate and share all over the internet that there wasn't a value system in place for them. But now because of blockchain um, and you can kind of you can kind of authenticate the ownership, all of a sudden the assets become a lot more valuable because you can see who owns it. And this is just like um, the Mona Lisa, right? So you could say, there's only one Mona Lisa. And if you wanted to make copies of that Mona Lisa painting, you could make millions of copies and everybody can own a copy of the Mona Lisa, but it doesn't mean you own it. It just means you own a copy of it. So similarly, that's what's happened with digital art. And the way that it's affected the creator economy is you could be a digital artist and you could be working for other people's games for most of your life up until now, because that was pretty much the only way you could, um, um, sort of make money, whether it's games or like a, a, a VFX company that's doing a big game, uh, a big sort of film or something, something of that sort, you're sort of working on other people's projects. But all of a sudden, with the advent of blockchain and NFTs, you can have a direct relationship with an audience that might just really appreciate your work. And so all of a sudden, it creates this new economy between the artist and the fan. So we can talk a little bit about how this is gonna affect the music industry. So as I just mentioned, uh, as a digital artist that's creating art for their fan base, maybe on Instagram, and now they can sell it as NFTs. Similarly, musicians can do that with their fans as well. Um, and, it, and it greatly reduces the amount of middleman involved between the artist and the fan. So if you're a musician and you're releasing music, usually you have to distribute that on the likes of Spotify or iTunes, et cetera. Um, this provides us another solution or a parallel sort of solution that allows you to engage with your fans in a different way, to distribute your music differently, and it cuts out all the people in between. So I can totally foresee in the future um, that there's going to be solutions where from your website, you could just put up your MP3 or a single, and you might want to sell a thousand of them or 500 or however many you like. And fans can just come to your website and purchase that MP3 directly. Um, it also allows for the musician to become more creative with how they engage with their fan base. So as I mentioned, like you could sell, you could sell um, your single release you, like you can still distribute it on Spotify, et cetera, but you might want to create a collector's item um, for that single release. And you might have five single releases that year. So for each one, you might have a collector's item for each single release. And with blockchain and the metadata that's sort of imprinted into the NFTs, you can, at the end of the year, see who's purchased all five of them, and that could unlock a certain reward or, or a prize. So again, it allows the creators to become more creative with how they engage with their fans. And I think a really important thing that we're gonna see in the next five to 10 years is the importance of gamification when it comes to engaging with audiences. So it's not just about spraying and praying marketing. It's not just about sort of like getting on every single social media website. I think it's gonna be more focused on building a core community and giving that community certain privileges, rewards, incentives to follow your music, to be engaged with you as an artist. And that's something that, um, yeah, I think is gonna be really exciting because it's gonna create a stronger bond between the fan and the music and the artist. It's also affecting the music industry um, through royalty collection. So a great example of this is um, because it's built on block, NFTs are built on blockchain. Let's say I'm, I write a song and I write a song with one of my friends. 
um, and we go to sell that song on a marketplace. Um, what we can do is actually write into the code of the NFT or what's called a smart contract, um, the distribution of wealth where that transaction is made to um, a consumer or a fan. So if the song is, set, let's say, $50, um, when someone purchased this, that NFT for $50, I might get $25 and he might, and they might get $25 upon transaction almost immediately. And so this again offers a new way for royalties to be collected. And, you know, um, if you have an experience with royalties, they can be very, very slow. It's taking several months and they're very opaque um, and just kind of a little archaic in terms of the collections uh, systems that we have in place. So blockchain is able to, and NFTs are allowed to sort of circumvent a lot of that problem. Um, and we're also seeing it being used by collection agencies. So in Italy, um, SIAE, which is the largest collection agency in Italy, has worked with Algorand, uh, a blockchain, to mint or create 4 million NFTs for 95,000 creators. So they can organize and imprint it with metadata and have a, have a system in place that's up to date, easy to find, uh, in, in, like transparent and immutable. So, it's already affecting royalty collection. And I think we're seeing a lot of new companies and businesses using the blockchain and NFTs to provide faster, more transparent solutions for musicians and creators to collect their royalties from sales. Um, another really interesting um, use case is ticketing. So as we all know, there's a huge problem around the world with counterfeiting. Um, this can be completely solved with NFTs and uh, the blockchain because it will show the true ownership uh, and the, the true uh, original seller of the ticket. So you can, you'll know exactly which one's real and which one's fake. Um, but what's also cool about blockchain or NFT ticketing is that you can put royalties within the NFT. Um, so if you're a promoter and you sell your tickets for 50 bucks and someone purchases that ticket and maybe they sell it on to someone else for, I don't know, say $75, even though they're selling it on for a higher price, um, you can actually have royalties put in place for the promoter so they receive something on the secondary transaction. Similarly, with music, music and artists, if you sell a, a single, um, you can sort of put royalties within to that NFT. So anytime it gets traded in the secondary market, as many times as, you, as it happens, you can always collect something from that. So I think that's a really powerful and innovative way of looking at royalties and, and ticketing. Um, another thing that I think is something that should be on everybody's radar, if you're in the music industry and interested in NFTs, is the metaverse. And the metaverse is a, a really vague kind of amalgamation of ideas, but essentially it's this new virtual um, universe and ecosystem and economy and assets that are being built and interacted. And a lot of it's being built in the blockchain. And so what NFTs allows you to do is sort of interact with that metaverse. Um, again, as I mentioned before, because all of a sudden we have a value system with digital assets. Now we can trade them and create a new economy around them. The metaverse is this sort of environment where these digital assets can thrive, can be traded, etc. And so if you're a musician and you want to sort of um, go into the metaverse, and so metaverse, uh, in terms of the interface, it could be like a video game, for example, and say like, a, uh, like popular ones are like Sandbox, Decentraland, Somnium Space, you can actually go in there, it's like a virtual environment, there's people walking around, and there might be a live event. And so if you want people to um, see your see your band perform, you might ticket that with an NFT inside of a virtual game. And I think, again, this sort of interaction between physical and digital um, is sort of being connected through the blockchain. And we're going to see more and more use cases of this as we, as we move forward. So I'm going to quickly touch upon some um, music NFT case studies. Um, so the first one I think uh, that's worth mentioning is, is Blau's um, Ultraviolet release. So he was the first one that tokenized a full album and he made 11.7 million US dollars, which is nothing to scoff at at all. Um, I do think that there was a lot of hype around NFTs when it went, went on sale and it's very hard to sort of replicate those figures, but it showed that there was a market for it. It showed that people were willing to purchase NFTs. And I think it opened the doors for many others to come after uh, on how they, how they can sell their music to uh, their audience. So one of the cool things that Blau did uh, was that he had different tiers and uh, altogether, I think there was only 33 uh, tokens for these three tiers. 
Uh, the, the final tier or the highest tier sold for 3.6 million and it included um, an opportunity for the, the owner of the NFT or the winner of the auction to make a song with Blau and release that song as, itself as an NFT. So again, it was just a really innovative way to bring that audience and artist connection together. And I think that's something that's resonated really well with fans from all kinds of music uh, styles. <clears throat> Um, another one that's interesting to touch on is Kings of Leon. Um, they were the first sort of major band that, that released um, uh, an NFT album. Um, they also offered uh, a golden ticket to, to NFT holders that would give them a lifetime front row seat to their shows. And it brought in a lot of mainstream audiences um, that weren't so familiar with NFTs because Blau, he was already very connected to the NFT community and blockchain community. So Kings of Leon was kind of one of the first that made it a bit more mainstream. I think um, Dead Mouse is a really interesting one to discuss because he has completely taken NFTs and run with it. Um, and he actually created his own collector cards. So his fans could open, so purchase sort of like packets of cards. And in those cards, there's different cards um, that are more rare than the others. And yeah, people actually loved it. And uh, they started purchasing these packs. And then also there's a, a marketplace where you can trade these cards. And some of these cards were going for tens of thousands of dollars. And it just showed that people, you know, are also interested in not just the music, but the experience of being connected to their art, to their, um, sorry, to their favorite artists, whether it's Dead Mouse or others. Um, this particular drop um, on, on Rares was actually done in conjunction with an Australian um, brand called Emanate, which I think is really cool. So. Yeah, and again, it just shows you that there's a lot of flexibility on what you can do with NFTs. Um, one that I'd like to mention is the one that I did about two weeks ago. Um, it was for a song called Piquette, and it was done with Saipi and Nono from the High Brothers. We released this song as an exclusive music single and music video release. So it means basically you couldn't access it or see it or listen to it or watch it anywhere, except unless you bought it as an NFT. Um, and it just, yeah, it was a way for High Brothers to understand how NFTs worked. And it also gave um, the audiences a chance to sort of join in on the fun and understand how it works. And we released that on the Binance marketplace. So a few NFT platforms that's probably worth checking out. Um, Get Protocol, uh, one of my favorite at, in the space, they do ticketing and they do um, an incredible job with, with what, what they're building. Um, so what they've done is, of course, you have the sort of NFT ticketing, but once you have that ticket and it's in your wallet, um, so let's say I'm an artist and you've purchased a ticket to my show, and maybe a week later, like you still have that ticket in your wallet, in your um, crypto wallet. So what I can do is like, because I know that you've gone to my show, I might give you something for free or a discount. So because you're a ticket holder, you might get 20% off my merch, or you might get a free NFT drop in your wallet just because you came and saw the show. It allows you to engage with audiences that have arrived at your show or come to your show in ways that you couldn't before because you've kind of collected, um, you know, and engaged them um, through the blockchain. You kind of have the, you have this sort of data, enough of their data to know that um, because they've engaged with you, you can kind of present them with more rewards. Um, I've also got Serenade on the list, and I'm not going to go too much into them because we actually have Serenade on this session, so I'm going to give them the floor after to go into a bit more detail, but they're an eco-friendly NFT marketplace uh, with, where, where artists and fans can, can uh, trade and, and share music and other digital assets. Um, Royal is actually a new um, crypto business that's being and marketplace that's been created by Blau, um, the artist I mentioned earlier, and it allows people to purchase ownership of a song um, and earn royalties from future royalties from it. So it's almost in a way investing in an artist, and in return you'll be able to get re rewarded royalties if they blow up or the music the song does well. Um, catalog is another one that's worth checking out. They allow artists to create NFTs on their own terms, implement their own royalty structures, um, and sell one of one um, uh, music releases. So that's one that's worth checking out as well. Um, of course, NFTs aren't all rosy. Um, there's, there's still concerns around the NFT space. I think the most predominant one that you probably heard of is the environmental footprint. 
actually it's it, it's real i think there's definitely problems that are invo involved with the footprint that it leaves especially in older blockchains like bitcoin um even ethereum they they take a lot of energy they consume a lot of energy um and it's something that we have to be very careful about moving forward and finding solutions to it um, another issue is transaction costs so when you actually make an nft or post an nft you need to uh, especially on the Ethereum um, blockchain, you need to use gas fees. And sometimes these gas fees are more expensive than the NFT that you're purchasing for. And so, and that's just because of congestion in the network. And the more people that are buy, buy, buying NFTs or using the blockchain, the higher these sort of transaction costs will become. There's also a lot of complexity still involved um, with NFTs, um, you know, just understanding how cryptocurrencies work, adopting it, transacting for the first time. It's not easy. It takes a little bit of learning to, under, to understand it. And lastly, it's noise. There's just so much happening right now that it's hard to keep track of and it's bewildering. And even for someone like me that loves it and follows it every day, there's just, you know, I'm only kind of getting like a 1% of all the things that are happening with NFTs. So some of the solutions for these problems, um, so layer two is, um, I guess, like um, a layer that exists on sort of the early blockchains that have come out, and they're providing solutions um, that are helping to sort of circumvent some of the issues that we're seeing with layer one problems. Um, they're faster, they're becoming cheaper, scalable, and more, most importantly, uh, a lot of these blockchains are carbon negative or even carbon um, yeah, neutral as well. Um, Ethereum itself is looking to upgrade its system so it becomes 99.9% .9 more energy efficient when it changes to a proof of stake um, uh, system, which is being, I guess, a lot of people are waiting for and it's being implemented. Um, a lot of new NFT marketplaces are introducing fiat or just sort of, you know, purchasing things with your credit card to make it a lot easier for adoption. And finally, I think it's there's a lot more community and conversation that's happening at the moment, which allows people to sort of enter the space, understand it better, um, and just share knowledge. And I think that's really important with NFTs and blockchain and everything else involved with technology moving forward. We need to keep talking about it. We need to keep talking about the problems, how they're gonna be solved and working with one another to support one another. And I think that's really, really important in the space. So like any kind of technology, these things take time. Um, by no means is blockchain completely perfect right now, neither are NFTs. Um, but what we're seeing is kind of like the early stage of a transformation. So if you look at video games, we went from a game like Pong to now games on PS5 uh, that look almost photorealistic. Uh, even the mobile phone in 1984, literally a, a giant brick in your hand. Now we have iPhones and the latest mobile technologies, which can pretty much do anything your computer can do. Uh, and of course, things like the web. In 1991, it was just a read-only page. Um, but now, with, especially with blockchain, we're seeing a new evolution again of how that's going to disrupt the internet space with Web3 technology and create new ways um, for us to share information, engage with one another, um, and create content and disperse it. So how, what does this all mean for musicians? Well, I think for too long, musicians have relinquished a lot of their control of their art to intermediaries, whether, um, you know, whether they're platforms or middlemen that are involved in the process. I think blockchain uh, may tip the scales back in their favor. And I think NFTs are a way for them to uh, interact with their fans on their own terms and uh, holding the cards in their own hands again. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Reggie. That was such an informative talk. Um, I know that there was so much in that and luckily we have recorded it and we'll be putting out the session. So um, for anyone who wants to catch up on that, um, we'll make it available through VMDO channels uh, in the next day or so. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but I can definitely relate to it um, being a learning journey. I feel like I'm at the start of that journey myself, but um, you know, I think what excites me is just getting uh, my head around how blockchain technology is applicable to different uses outside of, you know, just understanding crypto and understanding how huge NFTs could be for um, decentralizing the music industry and just those options that um, artists have connecting to their, to their fan bases and, you know, engaging with them, with them direct is really exciting. Um, 
We are also uh, really lucky to have one of the NFT platforms with us here today, and we're going to hear a short presentation from them. Um, we've got uh, Claire Smith with us from, from Serenade. They're an eco-friendly um, NFT uh, platform um, with an Australian founder. So I'm going to hand it over to um, Claire now to run through a presentation about that platform. Hi everyone, I'm Claire and I work at Serenade. Um, I head up partnerships there um, and I'm very excited that I've been given 10 minutes to share a presentation on what it is that we do and what our platform is about um, and really keen to chat afterwards and just hear comments and answer any questions you have. I've also got um, Nick Jackman um, on this as well, who is also a colleague of mine and works across our creative agency staff, as well as um, a big part of the sales and partnerships team. So he'll be also joining everyone in the Zoom rooms and you can answer any questions specifically to him as well. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick 10 minute presentation for everyone and explain a little bit about Serenade. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, so Serenade, we launched only about a month ago and we're a marketplace for eco-friendly music NFTs. Um, essentially, you know, if you want to bring it down to the nuts and bolts, we're a creative um, sorry, we're a platform for artists to get really creative and deliver unique digital collectibles to their real fans and establish, importantly, reoccurring revenue streams. Um, I thought I'd get uh, to how that kind of breaks down from a revenue perspective pretty quickly, just so I know there's a lot of uh, people who'd be interested in that. Um, Basically, um, if from every product, um, an artist takes home 85% of the initial sale. And then there's this wonderful, vibrant secondary market that um, we hear a lot about. And every reoccurring sale, the artist will get 15% of that sale um, perpetually. So it's a really exciting kind of revolution in the music industry in terms of being able to track these on sales um, and something that I haven't really seen happening in market before. Um, you know, when we started creating this platform, we saw that there are a lot of issues um, that people were finding in the music industry when it came to NFTs. Um, and so we started to think about it from a music perspective and what people needed from an NFT platform. And so the main things that we tried to, um, you know, uh, create solutions for were really uh, the idea of keeping things very simple and affordable. So we realised that the average fan probably doesn't really know about NFTs and certainly doesn't have a cryptocurrency wallet set up. So what we've created is a site that feels very simple and like an e-commerce platform uh, where you can actually just up, um, upload your credit card or debit card details and we do all the cryptocurrency conversion in the background. That wallet sits there for you. Uh, but you don't have to know Know a lot about it I mean if you want to get engaged you can and I'm sure people will be getting engaged over time but initially it really just feels like you're using a credit and cap uh, or debit card and then secondly we wanted to keep these products kind of affordable so we understand that like normal fans are used to buying merch products uh, at a reasonable price um, and currently when the big wave of NFTs were out there, um, Reggie spoke about it before, I mean, these things were going for huge amounts of money and most fans just can't even, ex uh, you know, can't afford those. Uh, so what we try and do is keep price points low and we believe that um, artists should offer a range of products. So from a lower cost point up until potentially higher cost um, auction items. Uh, we don't have gas fees on the site, which can get really expensive when creating a product. Um, so, and that's because we've kind of created this really simple, efficient technology. Um, so that like is really saving about $50 per product in costs, which means that those, co those savings go um, uh, given to the fan. Um, we produce NFTs at one tenth of the environmental impact. So of a tweet, so it's one forty-four thousand the carbon footprint of a standard NFT. And that's pretty amazing. Um, I'll talk about how that is in the next slide, um, but it really is about the way that we, um, it's the, that we sit on a layer two blockchain. Um, we're really focusing on a community. We found that people were buying these things, but there was nowhere to really talk about it, to showcase it. And we know that's what people who um, are music fans want to do. When you buy a great piece of merch, you want to show it off and talk about it. Um, and we realized that there were certain 
rights issues that artists were coming across, whether you owned your um, publishing or master. So we've created some solutions around, around that as well. Um, here's an example of just how simple the checkout flow is on our site. So it just feels like any e-commerce site. Um, it's really funny, actually, um, Max, the founder's grandmother, was able to purchase one from one of the releases and my seven-year-old son. So I feel like that is a testament to how simple this process is. Um, you purchase something, you pick your payment method, and you receive it into your collection. I mentioned uh, the environmental stuff. It really comes down to a proof of stake um, authentication process as opposed to a proof of work. Um, and we're sitting on a layer two blockchain. So, you know, what that actually means is that we're able to be really, really efficient from an energy perspective. And um, I think that's really important because a lot of artists were worried about creating NFTs uh, because of the backlash from fans. And we've been able to really come out with a strong argument of how these things actually in the scheme of, you know, what's going on, for instance, a tweet, is only you know one tenth of that. So um, it's been really great, and any artists who've released on the site were able to go out with that information to support. Um, so essentially, like the way that we see the platform is, we're just a, a, an avenue for artists to create really great, beautiful experiences for fans. Um, and it can be really anything. It can be like a video, an image, an audio track, um, an in real life experience that's bundled with an NFT. Um, you know, if we can upload it, it can become an NFT. Uh, and so the types of things we talk to people about are like VIP ticketing and experiences, archival music being released, uh, exclusive artwork. So uh, documentary content, special performances. Uh, so I wanted to show some examples of what uh, potentially artists have worked on the site with us to create. So we've done, we did a release with Ladyhawk, which is essentially she created some um, artwork which were digit, uh, digitally signed uh, and she they were the inspiration of her cover um, artwork and then also became the inspiration for the tour artwork. So an example of that is really, it was very simple. It was an animated GIF with a digital signature. Uh, and she did 25 each of those, one with a black signature and one with a white signature. Uh, uh, we worked closely with the Super Furry Animals and they created a wonderful one of one auction item, which was an artwork, um, animated artwork, which was inspired from their Rings Around the World 20th anniversary release. Um, and if you look very closely, there's an image of the band in there. Um, this artwork was created by Mark James, who did the original artwork and um, was really wonderful. They've got a huge engaged fan base. And it was lovely to see this released. Uh, Then we worked with uh, Jungle on uh, their first NFT release. Um, they uh, did a, quite a range of stuff and I, I just chose one to show you. But what I like, I wanted to show you was an example of someone doing um, a digital release but bundling it with a sort of physical thing. So uh, you could you bought the NFT artwork and then also you got physical merch sent to you and a personalised letter from the band. And they did five editions of that. And then Muki, uh, which is a great Australian emerging artist, decided to do um, a series of trading cards, uh, which she did 99 each of each trading card. Uh, and essentially they're just animated cards talking about her different personality types that she has. Uh, we've got some new things coming up. So new singles, uh, releases, uh, full album releases, unreleased demo tapes, documentary footage. As I said, it's really about getting as creative as you can. Um, you know, we're happy to explore anything and ways that we can um, put them on the platform. Uh, so we've got upcoming releases with um, a few bands. So Jungle, Super Fairy Animals, The Game, Hot Chip. Uh, sorry, we've worked with a few artists, Jungle, Super Fairy Animals, and then we're working with artists coming up, The Game, Hot Chip, Diggity, uh, The Kooks, UG, Simba, Sinkhole, uh, Kaiser Chiefs and Ride. My presentation skills, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, and essentially what we're trying to do is, you know, partner with a lot of the different um, uh, 
stakeholders within the industry, so ticketing and venues, D, D, uh, D to C e-commerce, social e-commerce sites. Um, so we're working on a release at the moment where we're partnering with a, um, a direct consumer uh, site so that we're able to get chart accreditation for one of the releases. So that's a really exciting evolution and super happy to talk about that later when we're um, in the breakout rooms. Um, oh, sorry. Um, then I wanted to quickly uh, just talk about the industries that we like. We work with a lot of different partners within the industry. We've got a lot of backing from international and local um, partners. So people like um, Unified, Machine Management. Uh, we work with Beggars, uh, Communion Music, uh, just many, many IOU, Secret Sounds, Bernard Fanning, even Hugh Jackman's in there. Okay. So we have a creative creative agency that we work with. Um, essentially, you know, a lot of people want to do NFTs, but they don't really know how to create them. And we're here to help. We can um, basically be here as a, um, a really an advisory, uh, have be advisors and help with a kind of creative um, ideation, the direction of production and the packaging and promotion direction as well. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to just do a quick walk through the video uh, of the platform. It's a little walkthrough video. Serenade's homepage shouts music community. Our all important environmental policy and FAQs are front and centre. You can look at different rows of wonderful content. Click on explore and search by genre or artist. Each piece of content is associated with a product and can be purchased right from the homepage or choose to click through to the actual product page where you can find out more and add to cart. And on the left, descriptive information about the digital collectible and its purchase history. Scroll down and click into a product and you end up on the product page where you can click by now and select a previously used payment method or just add a new card and check out that way. There is a comment thread below that gives the fan and artist an opportunity to talk about the product. For updates on your favourite artists, sign up and we'll send you notifications. You'll never miss out on the latest releases. Um... And yeah, that's the presentation. I'm really sorry. That's the worst presentation I've ever done in my life. But I think oh, no. what I was trying to say. So, no, yeah. not at all. Look, if it makes you feel better, um, I started a Zoom networking breakfast last year and messed up the audio settings and um, did the whole intro and nobody could hear me at all. And then I took <laughs> that and there were about 100 messages saying, <laughs> Katie, we can't hear you. You're talking to an empty room. So it, all, it happens. I think, the, I think the content was there, everyone. So I hope everyone got what I was trying to get. Yeah, absolutely. The presentation side of it really failed me. No, not at all. It was amazing to get um, an overview of the platform, Claire, and um, really exciting that, you know, this exists in Australia and the Serenade teams here in Australia as well. Um, and, you know, we're really lucky as well that... Um, uh, that, that we have Reggie at our disposal. And, um, you know, with that said, um, we have... Uh, you know, Claire, Reggie, and also Nick from the Serenade team still um, in the room. So if anyone wants to jump in with any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, alternatively, um, you can certainly jump up um, and pop your hand up and, and jump up on camera if you like as well. Um, so yeah, don't, don't be shy. Feel free to jump in if you do have any questions. Um, uh, actually, I have I have one for you, Reggie, around um, accessing NFTs without um, crypto. I mean, Claire was talking about um, the Serenade platform being really accessible in the sense that you could make purchases, um, you know, like a regular e-commerce site. Is um, is that uh, common across the various NFT platforms? Are you finding that um, predominantly you do need to um, engage with cryptocurrency in order to access NFTs? Um, yeah, I think that's a great question. I think um, there's definitely more and more platforms that are offering fiat solutions. So you can, um, you can transact with your credit cards. Um, personally, I think people should start educating, educating themselves now um, because I just think it's going to be such a, um, a big factor of, of our lives moving forward that it's 
probably best to start soon and start somewhere. And a lot of these platforms, um, the adoption and education phase is becoming smoother and easier. It's not as clunky as it was when they you know, first came out um, several years ago. So for anyone that hasn't uh, purchased an NFT or even kind of you know, familiarize themselves with cryptocurrencies and wallets, et cetera, I'd say start somewhere, um, you know, and, and just slowly learn. And as I said in the presentation, but something that I really kind of want to reinforce is like talk to people that have and kind of um, have conversations with people. It's really um, a great time to be learning this, a great time to be educating ourselves and also one another, because I think it will play a large and significant role in our lives moving forward. Can I just jump in there to, to add to that point? Um, I think eventually um, all the people, everyone who engages with NFTs will begin to learn uh, about how all this stuff functions, learn about digital wallets, learn about the value of um, blockchains and cryptocurrencies and facilitating these sort of artist fan interactions. Um, one of the sort of great benefits, and I, and I think this is what we've been seeing since we've launched, is we've had a lot of fans come on and, and purchase NFTs with genuinely no experience before in purchasing NFTs. Uh, and the process of purchasing one, uh, having a little, like having a horse in the, in the race finally, um, is actually sort of a great individual motivator um, for that person to go looking around and finding more information. We have a lot of people coming through on our sort of intercom chat um, after they purchase saying, hey, okay, I've got an NFT now. What does this mean? Where do I go? What do I do with it? Um, and I think, yeah, just really lowering that barrier to entry um, for fans in the first place is actually just a fantastic way to get people excited about uh, an industry where before they might have been entirely too intimidated to um, actually start looking into or um, start going through the wiki house on MetaMask and all of those lovely things that I feel like I was doing about six months ago and hated every second of it. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you so much, Nick. Go ahead, Nick. I was just going to jump in and ask, does that mean that the money that an artist makes on these platforms only exists in cryptocurrency and in the blockchain? Like, Reggie, you mentioned somebody made a million dollars. Was it a million dollars of cryptocurrency? And then that can only be presumably utilised within this metaverse world? That, <laughs> sorry, I'm very new yeah, to certainly, it. So certainly not on Serenade. On Serenade, we don't pay in cryptocurrency, so it's paid in uh, the normal currency of where the artist is based. Um, and, yeah, it's it's it's... There are sites that uh, certainly work just on cryptocurrency, but as I was saying, we're trying to move away from that model and move into a model that kind of works with the fan and artists more. And so on Serenade, that is not what happens. But Reggie, you could probably speak to the platforms that actually are just operating in cryptocurrency. Yeah, I mean, um, so to answer your question, I think so when some of like these millions of dollars are being you know transacted and sort of moved around the internet, for, for, for the most part, it is cryptocurrencies that are being moved around. Um, so I think one thing that happened with um, the NFT boom that we saw earlier this year, a lot of the money that was being moved around was actually from just crypto rich um, crypto investors from like, you know, 2016, when there was the initial sort of massive crypto boom, they were just sitting on all this ETH, Ethereum and Bitcoin. And because you can't go to the store and pick up some eggs and buy your milk with it. You needed to use it somehow. So all of a sudden they started pumping it into the NFT space. And that's why we saw this massive sort of like revolution and evolution of, of the NFT spaces because all these super rich people had all this money and they couldn't use it anywhere. So it went into NFTs and NFTs became this sort of perfect storm early this year because it provided this like clout and FOMO that was already attached with uh, the crypto space when but earlier in like 2016, 17, but it sort of like brought it into the, the cultural lens of art and, and, and digital assets and things. And so that paired with this sort of all this like money that people were sitting on, it just created this like, like beast, you know, that just sort of like got everybody really pumped up about the possibilities and things. But yeah, like fundamentally money is being moved around in cryptocurrencies, but, um, you know, cryptocurrencies can be transferred into fiat currency as well. So like, let's not forget just because it exists and it's a digital currency, you can, you know, 
bring it back into a US dollar or an Australian dollar. And there's you know, platforms and exchanges that allow for that to happen. And more and more NFT market spaces um, like Serenade, I think, you know, thanks Claire for jumping in, um, are providing solutions to keep it simpler. Um, so you don't have to sort of get your head around cryptocurrency if you just want to use your, you know, your Commonwealth bank card, it's, it's, you can still do that. Um, but like I said, I think it's really, it's just such a good opportunity to start learning about this space. It's, it, it is really hairy and complicated, but little by little, um, you can sort of, you can, if you can kind of grasp some of the basic concepts, you'll get a bigger, better understanding. And then you'll understand just how massive and uh, important this whole space is. Thanks so much, Reggie. We've um, got another question from um, Stephen in the chat. He's hoping to hear any more successful examples of emerging artists using NFTs. I think can pass that to you guys, yeah. Yeah, I think, well, obviously, sort of Mookie is our um, main one that we've got here. Uh, and I think over the next few months, we'll have the opportunity to see a lot more of them. Um, I think one of the things that is potentially um, holding emerging artists back at the moment from at least developing these ideas is it really does seem like only the top end of town uh, are, are getting any money out of this. And, and, and that's not true. Um, that's just because, you know, Blau makes $12 million and someone's got to talk about that because that's incredible. Um, I think the actual offer for emerging artists is incredibly exciting, um, particularly for a fan to get something really early on that one, not only sort of proves that they were there right at the beginning um, and, and get all that social cred for finding them first, um, but it also allows that artist to benefit in the upside um, if they if that artist does become sort of more relevant and more successful. Um, and it also sort of creates these really wonderful advocates in their fans for their artists because they actually might be able to, to, to get some genuine um, benefits as well from that artist being successful. So I think the incentives are really awesomely aligned there. Uh, and I think as the space develops, uh, as sort of the general public um, has more access to getting engaged with this sort of stuff, um, the more we'll start to see um, these emerging acts really um, starting to have some great success. And of course, with emerging acts, it requires a little bit of time for that emerging act to get a little bit more successful. So it's possible all those case examples are out there now, uh, just waiting to sort of um, be uncovered. I, I actually like to think of emerging it being a really great area for emerging artists. Like from a promotional perspective, I think it's a good story and there's innovation coming out in that story. But also the reality is you don't have to have a huge fan base. You have to have an engaged fan base. That's what it's all about. So uh, if you've got, uh, if you do pretty well in uh, D to C, then I think you're going to do well in this market if you can explain it to your fans and get them to understand what the benefits are. Um, and so, you know, this is what Serenade is all about. We just don't want to be there for the established artists who are making a lot of money. You know, we think there's real opportunities for emerging artists as well. Thanks for that, Claire. Yeah, it's really interesting to reflect on, um, you know, once you sort of move away from hearing about like the visual artists, like people that have made, you know, multi-millions of dollars on NFTs, you know, at the start of the year when, when all of this news was emerging and then hear the conversations go into, you know, what it means for fans to sort of, you know, express their fandom, um, you know, have a token to, to sort of um, align themselves with that particular artists and, and how it can potentially be linked to, in, you know, in real life um, perks and benefits. Um, I, you know, went to a talk the other week where they were talking about um, Coachella and, um, they're engaging with NFTs and, you know, what that means from a, you know, punter perspective, attending a festival and how that can unlock different experiences within the festival itself and just be a, like a, a really clear way to connect people into, um, I suppose, a deeper fan experience, you know, whether it be purely digital or whether it reaches out into um, the rest of the, you know, physical world. Um, We've got another question here from uh, Katrina, who's asking, um, are all the examples individual artists or can you see ways um, of groups of Australian and New Zealand songwriters benefiting as a group, for example, through APRA, which I think is a great question. Um, 
Uh, that might, and, and perhaps that's a question more about also about blockchain technology as well. So um, feel free to jump in anyone who wants to answer that. Um, I mean, I feel like there's opportunities for groups as well as individual artists. And it's really, as I said, I think uh, we're just at the beginning now in terms of creativity and how we can make these NFTs work. Um, and I think, you know, it's really about working out how those revenue strip splits would work uh, between various artists within a group. And Reggie, you might be able to speak a bit more, but the way that we do it is, you know, 85% gets given to the artist and then that would need to be split between the different kind of, you know, creators within within a campaign. Um, but yeah, certainly, I mean, we're, we're looking to work with partnerships where it's a various artists and we've been talking a lot around opportunities around that. Um, and I think it's a model to, to look at going forward. Um, how that looks and how it's shaped at this point in time, I think it's a bit of an evolving beast, but I think there's real opportunity there. Um, yeah, just to add to that, I think um, if you look just sort of taking a, a larger step out of just NFTs, but blockchain in general, if we used blockchain with DSPs, um, even collection agencies, if you're a songwriter or if you're a stakeholder in a song, you could literally get paid upon the click of someone listening to it. Um, so this is already being experimented and utilized by companies like Audius and uh, Emanate. And so what it does is it, it allows that sort of instant um, royalty payment to be upon the listen. And I think that's incredibly powerful knowing that you know, musicians are some of the only creators in the world that don't get paid until months after they've created their, their art. And I don't think that's fair, particularly fair for them. There needs to be better solutions. They need to be more, um, they need to be faster. They need to be more efficient. And I think that we need to uh, find these solutions to, to help empower them uh, and, and offer them a fair slice of the pie immediately, not six months after the fact or something. And I think blockchain allows you to do that. As, as Claire mentioned, using smart contracts, we can have those royalty splits upon literally when the song is listened to. And uh, within that smart contract, you could have, you know, all the different splits you need and through microtransactions, uh, that, that, that split can be distributed upon the, up, upon the click. So in a way, like, you know, we, we need to be moving towards those sort of mechanisms um, and distribution solutions. Um, yeah, just to make things fairer for everyone that's involved in the music industry. Mm -hmm. I was just going to jump in as well. Like currently we're working with the different stakeholders, as I said, and talking to publishers and rights holders, et cetera. There's no industry standard at this point in time for this. Um, I do believe that's something that's going to happen in the future. And we're certainly trying to push towards that. Um, you know, as, as Reggie was mentioning, the technology's there. It's just about, all, you know, coming to a consensus about how that's going to work from an industry perspective. Thanks, Claire. I've got another question here um, from Yanni. Um, can you take, sorry, can you talk a bit more about how a company like Emanate works? Um, where does the money come from uh, to pay artists royalties every time a song is streamed? Uh, that has been distributed to Spotify, um, it all via Animate, for example. Um, so I'm not exactly sort of privy to how the inner workings works in terms of uh, where the money comes from. Um, funnily enough, I, I was speaking with Emanate last week and they're a really nice bunch of guys. Uh, if you'd like, I can probably send you some information on like where to follow up. Um, maybe they're a, a great company to have on the next session of this to sort of explain that in a bit more detail. Um, but like... Yeah, I don't think I could sort of justify or kind of give the right information on, on that sort of inner workings. No worries. Thanks, Reggie. Um, we are going to stick around for uh, some from for some networking if anybody's interested in staying on the line. But I wanted to uh, thank all of our speakers again. Um, we've got Reggie from Club Media, Claire from Serenade, and. Um, and also Nick who jumped in from Serenade, thank you all so much for uh, joining BMDO Links today and um, you know, sharing all your wisdom about NFTs um, and the Serenade platform and what's to come in the area. Um, I wanted to tell you all about our next BMDO event um, before we go into uh, some further networking. Uh, in two weeks time, we are gonna be running an event um, in conjunction with Melbourne International Games Week. Um, the event's called Game Plan, where we'll be taking a look into 
uh, the opportunities in games for artists and music companies uh, to explore engaging gaming content and experiences. So, um, you know, think of um, top level thinking of those, those things that we've seen in the media recently about, um, you know, Travis Scott in Fortnite um, and, um, you know, various artists in Roblox and whatnot, and really unpacking some case studies as to how those in-game experiences work. Um, that presentation is going to be brought to us by um, Music Ally in the UK, um, who are definitely um, real experts in all things emerging tech and business trends in the music industry. Um, so I'm going to pop a, a link in the chat. Um, we just announced this event in the last few hours, so we'd love to see uh, you all there. That's happening on Monday, the 4th of October um, from 6 to 7.30pm for Melbourne International Games Week.